Welcome back to Firewatch. We're joined today by Assistant Fire Marshal Tim Henshaw talking to us about holiday decorations. So Tim, uh, now we've talked about Christmas trees for a little bit. Um, let's talk about lighting. Uh, it's just not the holiday season without lights all over our homes on decorations. Um, talk to us about the different kinds of lighting and some of the hazards that can be associated with that. Well, today, as, as you're well aware, in the marketplace, there are many different sized bulbs, shapes, and types. Uh, we brought a few in so everybody could compare. We have the miniature lights. Uh, these small bulbs um, are rather cool and uh, make a nice light for a tree uh, inside for artificial and real. We also brought some of the larger bulbs here today. These large bulbs get very, very hot. And uh, typically we'd prefer, even though they say indoor, outdoor, we'd prefer that that use only be outdoor. And then we also uh, brought along with us today um, new LED type lights. LEDs are all over uh, in the marketplace um, because they're energy efficient. These are energy stars and also they burn at a much cooler rate. You're talking about the uh, fact that the light bulbs have different temperatures. Uh, why is that so important? Well, as you can see here from our display, we like to decorate with all kinds of materials uh, from trees to tablecloths to this artificial type snow. And each of those materials has a different ignition temperature. And these light bulbs get very, very hot in some cases, could melt and start a fire. Even in the short time that we had the uh, large light bulbs plugged in, it was coming into contact with the tablecloth and was starting to melt it even in just a short period of time here. Um, how important, I guess, when you're looking for lighting, and a lot of times it'll say for indoor use, for outdoor use, or for both. Um, a lot of times we try to, uh, to hedge a little bit. Maybe we use those outdoor bulbs indoors or vice versa. Why should we not do that? Well, because they will get hot enough to melt things. And outside, think about the difference in temperature between indoors and outside. Say you keep your house at 70 degrees, now you have this light bulb. There isn't anything to cool it, so it's gonna be as hot as it possibly can be. Outside, when the snow starts to fall and the temperatures drop to 30, that light bulb, those cool temperatures will cool it and it'll remain a little bit cooler outside than it will inside. So I guess from a, um, a safest standpoint, we're talking these LED bulbs are probably our safest bet. Yeah, unbelievable difference. Um, the new generation of LED bulbs are really, really cool compared to some of these older style, larger light bulbs. Yeah, I think that uh, using like a thermal temperature gun, uh, we've, we've looked at these light bulbs before and we know that the LED bulbs come in at about 76, 77 degrees, which um, even with all these other decorations around, that's not hot enough to combust, correct? Yeah, it's almost just above the ambient temperature of the room, where in some of our larger bulbs are well exceeding 100 degrees. Yeah, we looked at some of these uh, larger red bulbs and they were getting close to 140, 150 degrees. Um, if we've got a light bulb that's that hot, how, how dangerous is that exactly? That's really dangerous. You know, it will start to melt plastic as we'd indicated here on the table. Um, some of these lower ignition temperature materials could set them on fire. But if we have an infant, a child, or even a, a, an adult touch one of these bulbs, you could have burns to the hands or the arms. So not even just from a fire standpoint, but also from a burn injury standpoint as yeah, well. Yeah, burn injury standpoint. These older bulbs and some of the mid-sized bulbs are hot enough to burn you. Think about that compared to the temperature of water. You know, you don't really want your water over 100 degrees. These are in the 140s and up. These are dangerous temperatures. Okay, so that's, you know, talking about lighting. When we talk about plugging all these things in, uh, you know, we have to have a power source for all of our lights, whether or not we decide to use the larger bulbs or the smaller energy efficient LED bulbs. Um, when we plug them into outlets, what are some other things that we need to be looking at to make sure that we're being as safe as we possibly can? Well, each of the strands of lights or all of the equipment will come uh, with a listed thing in the owner's manual telling you, for instance, how many light strands can be plugged in together. The old rule of thumb was no more than three could be piggybacked, but in some of these LED applications where they're drawing such less amps, refer to the manuals because you can actually plug more in together. Going back the whole way to the outlet, if you have a surge protector that's fused under your Christmas tree, that's okay, but make sure that the surge protector is plugged directly into the outlet. Same with our exterior lights, um, our blow-up type air inflated structures. These use a lot of power, so make sure they're plugged directly into an outlet and not 
into an extension cord, into an extension cord, into an extension cord. And every piece of uh, wiring or cords that we should be using should be UL listed, correct? Should be UL listed, and it brings up a very good point. Just like the light strands, all of our extension cords, our surge protectors, they will also say indoor or outdoor. So if you need more power taps, don't think you can just go to the office desk and take one of those outside. It has to be listed for outside. So as you're plugging in those yard decorations, make sure you're using the right piece of equipment. Okay. Now, when we look at all these other types of decorations, and this is just a, a, a tip of the iceberg for what type of Christmas and holiday decorations are out there. Um, when we look at some of these artificial snows that folks have, be it the uh, blanket kind or even um, the frosty snow product here, um, what are some things that folks need to be aware of when they use these products? These products can be very dangerous if brought into the wrong environment. You know, you don't want to have open flames around them. You don't want to have these hot light bulbs. So you want to take a look at exactly where you're going to use them. A lot of these products are made of plastic and therefore will melt or potentially burn. So take a look at where you want to use them in relation to dangerous objects or things that get extremely hot. Now you brought up candles and open flames. A lot of folks this time of year enjoy having candles as part of their decoration. In fact, you know, October, November, December are the peak months of the year for candle related fires. Um, as folks are using candles and open flames in their homes this holiday season, what are some things that they need to do to make sure that they're being safe? Well, candles, uh, in regards to the old style with the wick in which you light, we want to make sure that they're in some type of votive or container so that they can't be easily tipped over. And if they are, there's something to keep that flame from touching other items. So we recommend plates, votives, uh, candle holders to keep them upright. And you want to make sure that they're away from combustibles, not only beside it, but above it. You wouldn't want to place it under a branch. So clearly the way we have these candles set up here is not the optimal that setup. That is not the optimal setting. Too close to the tree. There are also um, the candle in the back that's on the plate could be easily tipped over into the snow. Okay, but now the candle we have sort of here in the globe is a little bit safer. That's the best case scenario, yes. We know that it's um, in there and it's tip proof. You also want to check the wick and make sure that it's trimmed appropriate so the flame is a nice size but not too large. But now we also have here some battery powered candles. Talk to us a little bit about those. Well, we brought in some safer um, alternatives that basically have the look and appearance of a real candle, but they're very, very safe. Once again, bringing in the LED technology, we get the light that's battery powered, um, but we get very low temperatures, if any temperature difference, and these could be brought into the snow and or uh, around uh, areas with kids and animals, and if they get knocked over, they're not gonna start a fire or cause a burn injury. All right, so we've talked about Christmas trees, we've talked about lighting, we've talked about candles and other types of decorations. Um, as we head into the holiday season, what are some of the, the key things that you want folks to remember as they set out to decorate their homes this holiday season? Well, make sure you do it safely. We had talked a little bit about the decorations, but as you get out, you know, if you're pulling out step ladders, extension ladders, putting icicle lights on your house, we want you to remain as safe as possible. And remember, these things can be dangerous. So have someone assist you with the ladder. Don't go too high if you don't feel comfortable and uh, make your yards look beautiful, but do it in a safe manner. And if folks want more information about holiday safety, where are some places they can go to get those resources? They can always go to the National Fire Protection Association's website. They can also go to the United States Fire Administration website. Both of those have very detailed, specific directions on holiday decorations. They also have uh, chimney fire safety decorations, the use of uh, listed electrical equipment. Both of those resources have numerous pages on holiday lighting and decorations. Okay. Well, Tim, we appreciate you taking time to come and uh, show us some of these decorations and, and how we can be safe this holiday season. Thank you for having me today, Ron.